All right, so that is the end. Uh. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> I'm messing up here. Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Today we're in Whippany, New Jersey, and we're gonna take this pond completely out. We got an existing about like 14 or 15 by 20 something foot pond. It's got a negative edge waterfall and a set of waterfalls in the background. A couple things going on here. This is actually a top heavy system. And what I mean by that is the reservoir that all this water is falling into is not large enough to sustain this pond. It's undersized. So what happens is if you shut this off, all that water in motion from the top of that waterfall across the pond and then into here has to come down to this area there's not enough room here to accept all that water so it just ends up overflowing and then when you turn it back on you've got to put the hose back in to get the water level back up what we're going to be doing is completely removing this pond every single rock piece of gravel is coming out of here and we're starting from scratch we are going to have a negative edge waterfall coming off here more along our style with the big boulders and nice cascade coming into our reservoir which is going to be about 1300 gallons and then from there, it's going to have a little bit of a skimming area before it returns into the reservoir. Pump vault will go in here for our SLD 5 to 9, which is going to run the new constructed wetland filter that's going to go up top. And we've got a secondary pump for jets. You can see we've got a lot of beautiful fish in here. Gorgeous big koi. And there are a ton of babies as well. We're going to get these guys out into holding tanks. And then we're going to start dismantling this pond. All the water's got to get pumped out then every single rock has to come out of here. This pond is not that old. I think it's only like a year or so old and they're just unhappy with it. So we're here to make them happy. We're gonna make this larger because they wanna have more fish in it, give them a nice big constructed wetland filter, fix the top heavy problem and give it the AWG touch. Let's get rolling. So we just got our bigger excavator over here to this job. We had the small one here that helped us out a little bit over on this side here where the machine is now, but it can't quite reach the rest of this pond. It's about 30 feet or so, give or take some. So it's hard to reach all the way across. And there's a patio actually on the opposite side of this pond that we don't want to have to take up or destroy and we don't want to track on it. So now we got this big guy here. We were trying to keep the pond nice and dry, but our efforts would have gone in vain anyway. Let me flip this around and show you why. So all the way over here, we pretty much got all the rocks and just about all the gravel out. We're actually gonna start taking our liner and folding it out into the rest of the pond here so we can actually make a little ramp with the machine, get down in here and start getting all these other rocks. But why our efforts would have gone in vain to cut, try and keep all the dirt under this liner dry is if we go right in this area here, when I, when I push down on it, you see it kind of pushes back up. So there's a lot of water actually under the liner here and that happens when the water gets under the pond when it rains a lot and especially if it's at kind of a downhill slope because when all that water is going down the hill and it finds that pond liner it's going to go down that pond liner and eventually into the bottom of the pond like what i just showed you causing the liner to kind of bubble up and we see it a lot with certain ponds and kind of the bottom corners of yards it wells up especially when you take out all the weight of the water it wells up that liner and can actually bubble out all the gravel at the bottom and even a couple rocks depending on how heavy they are. And so we spoke with our customer here, we're actually gonna end up doing drainage under the whole pond and they have existing drainage in the backyard that we're gonna tie into. But first to do that, we still gotta finish out taking out all of these rocks. There's an intake over there that we still have to take apart. And then we have a little bit left up here in the waterfall, but we're gonna finish tearing this out today.
We're on to day two here. Anthony showed you guys yesterday the water that was underneath the liner. At the end of the day, this excavation was clean and dry. Today, we got water, it's soaking wet. So there is water actually bleeding into this excavation. You can see some of it coming right through the side over here. They've got a lot of clay here and the stuff just has nowhere to go. So when it finds little holes and get through, the water releases and it's gonna end up in the lowest spot, which is the bottom of the pond. We're gonna get our floor excavation right where we need it to be. Then we're gonna be cutting troughs right through the middle with branches going out to the sides. Install fabric, pipe work, and gravel. We wanna take that water out and we're gonna send it into a sump over here. We'll be using a piece of ADS road pipe. That's gonna go in vertical right in this area here. So that'll be in the ground about a foot and a half below the bottom of the pond. We'll run all our piping over to this spot. We'll pour a concrete floor in it and then we're going to put a sump pump in there with a float so if any water ends up under the pond when it makes it over to here it'll be ejected and shot into their drainage system i know that's a lot don't worry these guys are going to show you how that works at the same time we're going to be installing our negative edge reservoir the water from this pond if you remember before it was falling off the waterfall and it was only falling into eight aqua blocks that's about 150 gallons of water storage which is not nearly enough now we're going to be putting in 40 large aqua blocks, 1300 gallons of storage. That's gonna make this thing run perfectly. So it won't be top heavy like it was before. We'll get the reservoir in today along with the pump vault. Hopefully the drainage gets in today. Then we can start shaping this pond out and doing the fun stuff. Okay, we've got our excavation completed here. We've also dug a trench in here for our under drainage. Again, there is a high, high water table here in this clay soil. So we're just filling this with gravel. We also have wrapped our pipe completely with fabric. Once we have enough gravel in that's gonna make this level with the rest of our excavation, we're gonna fold this up and tuck it in real, real nice. This way we don't get any dirt or any debris clogging the pipe and preventing that water that we want to get over to our sump pump from happening. So we're graveling in all around here and then wrapping it up real good, making sure it's level. And then it's liner and aqua block. All right, that's a wrap on the day for us. What we got accomplished today was exactly what was on our hit list. So this here is about a 10 by 14 foot space holding 40 aqua blocks and our pump vault. So on our pump vault, we actually have a extension just to accommodate the larger aqua blocks that were used. This here is going to store about 1400 gallons of water. And the reason this is important for a system like this with a negative edge because the volume of water in the pond is going to come up about three inches higher than that weir. That three inch volume of water across the entire surface of the pond is, one, is going to continue flowing this way. If we did not have this basin to catch that water and save it for reuse, this water would just flood out into the yard and that's exactly what happened on the old pond. So now we've sized it properly to accommodate the surface area of water about three inches thick. So when the pumps are shut for whatever reason, this water will fall into the basin, stay there, you plug the pumps back in, and it's ready to recirculate up through the wetlands, down through the waterfalls, into the pond, and then finally over that negative edge. We also got in our under pond drainage. 
which is going to sit to about two inches below the floor of the pond. We've got it in gravel and totally encased in our fabric. So any water that wants to percolate up from the ground up under the liner will find itself in one of these pipes all pitched down this way and then over to where a sump pump will be and then that will connect into their drainage and send it away. That keeps that hydrostatic pressure from pushing that liner up, stretching it, potentially damaging it, but all of that water now has a place to go and exit without causing any damage under the pond. So our shirts all say, I love my job. And that's true, even when <laughs> you're walking around with about I don't know, eight pounds of clay, muck, mud glued to your boots and getting stuck in the mud. This is quite the task here at hand, but we are working on carving out this little inlet. This is the spot of the pond, which is going to go straight down from the patio to the bottom floor of the pond. We've got our drainage under there. So we're just trying to scoop out this really, really wet stuff. And then we can come back, start carving in our back shelf fish cave over here we're gonna do a fish cave probably over there and then one more under the waterfall which will be back there I'm a compactor <laughs> about to get real up in here. <laughs> <laughs> 